Refuge with Allah from Satan the accursed, in the name of Allah the gracious, the merciful. And whoso obeys Allah and this messenger of His shall be among those on whom Allah has bestowed His blessings, namely the prophets, the truthful, the martyrs, and the righteous. And excellent companions are these. This grace is from Allah, and sufficient is Allah the All Knowing. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم. In this lesson, we will be looking at the fourth surah of the Holy Quran, Surah An-Nisa, including Bismillah. Surah An-Nisa consists of one hundred and seventy-seven verses and has twenty-four rukus. which are sections. Surah An-Nisa was revealed between the third and fifth year of Hijrah, the migration to Medina, and after the battle of Uhud. Hazrat Aisha anha, is reported to have said that this chapter was revealed when after her marriage to the Holy Prophet wasallam, she had come into his house. And as she came into the house of the Holy Prophet ﷺ some time after the migration, this proves to be of Midianite origin. This surah starts with a verse that talks about the miraculous origin of human form from a single cell. Thus, a new interpretation of Adam has been explained. This surah has a deep connection with the concluding part of the previous surah, Surah Ali Imran. Besides dealing with the teaching of steadfastness, the previous surah towards its end also teaches to exhort one another to be steadfast and safeguard one's boundaries. 
Surah Ali Imran mainly consisted the theme of Christianity. However, this surah presents a comparison between Islam and Christianity. Reference has also been made to the rise of Christianity in the latter days. As this surah was revealed after the Battle of Uhud, it talks about bloody wars against enemies, resulting in a large number of women being left as widows and children as orphans. In connection with the problems caused by wars and the rights of widows and orphans, one solution to these problems has been presented in the form of polygamy, with the condition that a mormon or a true believer maintains absolute justice. In case of being unable to do justice, this permission to marry more than once or four times will become invalid. Christianity proclaims its superiority over other religions regarding its teachings about women. However, after a cursory glance over the teachings regarding the treatment and status of women, which Islam establishes, one would conclude that the Islamic teachings are infinitely superior to those of Christianity. This surah is the first among divine revelations to safeguard the rights of women. They are not only given the rights of inheritance along with men, but have also been declared to be the masters and the arbiters of their property. Hence, this surah has been given the name An-Nisa, the women. Another topic which this surah covers is that of hypocrisy. In the latter days, Christianity was to gain worldwide dominance and a large number of Muslims were to live under the subservience of Christian governments. As a result, some weak-minded Muslims were to adopt hypocritical ideologies. And this surah deals with this subject matter and sheds light on their low spiritual condition. The relationship between Judaism and Christianity and the advent of Prophet Jesus السلام, has also been discussed. That when the Jews broke all their covenants and became hard-heartened and tried to kill Jesus السلام, on the cross, Allah the Almighty frustrated their plan of killing him on the cross. This surah proves as an exoneration for Prophet Jesus السلام, and his chaste mother Maryam السلام, from all the allegations which were leveled against them by the Jews. This surah also talks about the migration of Prophet Jesus السلام, and mentions the prophecy that there would not be left among the people of the book any group who did not believe in the truthfulness and natural death of Prophet Jesus السلام. This prophecy was fulfilled word for word by his emigration to Kashmir via Afghanistan. The Promised Messiah والسلام, has also talked about this in his book Jesus in India. In the concluding verses of this surah, it is declared that the false doctrines of Christianity, such as atonement and trinity, will in the end be obliterated and the doctrine of the oneness of God will reign supreme in the world. Reference has been made to the ultimate success and dominance of Islam over the world. The continuation of prophethood under the subordination of the Holy Prophet وسلم, has categorically been mentioned in verse 70 of this surah. This is significant to the spiritual status and grandeur of the Holy Prophet Muhammad وسلم. As the title of prophethood cannot be attained by following any other prophet, be it Moses or Abraham or Jesus. The promised Messiah والسلام, had attained the status of a subordinate prophet through this very means. Another very significant and important verse of this surah is verse 159. The Jews tried to kill Prophet Jesus والسلام, and crucify him on the cross. 
because they thought he was not the Messiah who was foretold to appear. The Jews claim he had died on the cross to prove he was a false prophet. However, the Holy Quran rejects this false claim. Reference to this has been made in the previous verse, verse 158. This verse 159 further refutes the allegation and states that Jesus was exalted to God himself and was granted his nearness. Interestingly, it should be noted here that the Holy Quran does not say here that Allah the Almighty raised Prophet Jesus towards the sky, but only that he raised him towards himself. This clearly signifies not a physical but a spiritual ascension because no fixed abode can be or has ever been assigned to God the Exalted. This verse contains a refutation of the allegation of the Jews that having becoming accursed by crucifixion, Prophet Jesus had become spiritually dishonoured and degraded, God forbid. This verse clears him from this blemish and speaks of his spiritual status. An interesting incident regarding verse 42 of this surah is as follows. Hazrat Abdullah bin Mas'ud anhu relates that once the Holy Prophet wasallam instructed me to recite the Holy Quran. I asked the Holy Prophet wasallam that you want me to recite the Holy Quran despite the fact that it was revealed upon you. Upon this the Holy Prophet wasallam said that I like it when others recite the Holy Qur'an. Upon this I started reciting Surah An-Nisa. When I reached the 42nd verse, فَكَيْفَ إِذَا جِئْنَا مِنْ كُلِّ أُمَّةٍ بِشَهِيدٍ وَجِئْنَا بِكَ عَلَى هَا أُولَاءِ شَهِيدًا And how will it fare with them when we shall bring a witness from every people and shall bring thee as a witness against these? The Holy Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam instructed me to stop whilst tears were flowing down his eyes. A prayer has been recorded in verse 76 of this surah. Rabbana akhrijna min hadhihi al-qariyati zalimi ahluha waj'al lana min ladunka waliyan waj'al lana min ladunka nasira. Our Lord, take us out of this town, whose people are oppressors, and make for us some friend from thyself, and make for us from thyself some helper. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. In today's class, we are going to learn rules of recitation in verse 159 of chapter 4. A'udhu billahi minash shaytan rajeem. Verse 159 is Bal rafa'ahu wa azizan hakima. The rules of recitation in focus today will be covered by points. The first point we should understand that the merging in English, merging or assimilation in Arabic, it is called idgham. And idgham is always from a second letter to a mutaharrik letter. So in this case, this lam of bal is a second letter. And ra is a mutaharrik letter with a fatha and a tashdeed, shadda. And merging of lam and ra, how to do that? And there are several kinds of assimilation or merging or idgham. This kind of idgham, which is in focus, sa sakin lam, 
to a mutahharik ra. In terminology, it is called idghamul mutaqaribai, assimilation of two proximities. And it is observed or exercised or done when two letters which are near to each other in terms of makhraj, point of articulation. And secondly, also in sifat. This is called idgamul mutaqaribai. Now, lam and ra. When we reflect on the points of articulation, al, ar, or al, ar, we find they are quite near in points of articulation. Now, in this case, lam to ra, the assimilation will take place that lam will be not counted in pronunciation. And we will recite that like ba straight away to ra. Bar rafa'ahullahu ilayhi. Another very famous example is the beautiful prayer mentioned in Surah Taha, where the word Qul and Rabbi comes together. Surah Taha is chapter number 20. And this verse 115, 115. Wa Rabbi Zidni Ilma. But it will be pronounced Wa Rabbi. Kaf and Ra together. Lam will be ignored altogether. Wa Rabbi. The same rule will be applied here that after lam sakin, when the next letter is ra, mutaharrik, then lam will be ignored altogether. And the previous mutaharrik will be joined bar rafa'ahullahu. Point number four is that there are two broad categories of huruf letters, thick, and thin letters. Thickness is called in terminology tafkhim. This is Arabic word. And thinness of letter of pronunciation, it is called tarqiq. It is also an Arabic term. So keeping in mind this tafkhim and tarqiq, we find that tafkhim will be applied if ra carries fatha or dhamma. So ra will be thick or thin. This is a variable. It is not a permanently thick all the time. It is subject to its stroke. When ra carries a fatha or dhamma, it will be pronounced with a heavy sound, with a thick sound, full mouth. In this case, rafa'ahullah ra will be thick because it carries a fatha. And with regards to tafkhim, we have to be mindful of the word lamul jalala or ismul jalala. And in ismul jalala, which is Allah, the lamul jalala is a very important to note. So in other words, tafkhim of lamul jalala, and it depends upon the previous letter that it will be either it will be pronounced with a thick sound or with a thin sound, with a tafkhim or tarqiq. Now, in this case, here, because Allahu and the just previous letter, preceding letter is ha with the dhamma, according to the rules. This lamul jalala, lamu shaddad in the word Allah will be 
pronounced with a full mouth, with a heavy sound, with a thick sound. But if the previous letter with a kasra, like a bismillah, amillah, it will be pronounced with a thin sound and tarqilik will be exercised there. Eighth point is that clear nasal sound. Clear nasal sound means clear pronunciation of noon, sakin, or tanween. And in terminology, it is called izhar. Izhar means manifestation, to manifest, act of manifesting. So when we say izhar, in terms of the Quranic recitation, it means the clear manifestation of nasal sound caused by tanmeen or noon sakin. We find in verse number 159, there is no noon sakin here. But tanween acts like a noon sakin because our voice sound ends there. Azizan, hakiman. So azizan that will not be prolonged. It will only be pronounced about one second, one count, azizan, clear manifestation. Point number nine is that we should be mindful of rule of pausing, waqf, in such words. And azizan, it will be in waqf, in stopping aziza. Hakiman, Hakima. So two to three counts, not more than that. Two to three counts. So Wakan Allahu, because noon with the fatha and tafkim will take place. So in other words, we can find that here in this verse number 59 three times tafkhim, the rule of tafkhim will be exercised. Ra, rafa, rafa'ahu allahu and wakanallahu. But at the same time, it is important to note, especially when we are making lamul jalala with a tafkhim, that if the previous letter is a thin letter, that should remain thin like ha or noon in this case, in this verse. And azizan and hakima, as I mentioned, that it will be called two counts, as I mentioned, and it is called Maddul Ivat. And the rule is that Tanween of Fatha, which is here an Azizan to Fatha or Fatha Tain or Hakiman to Fatha or Fatha Tain, Fatha Tain basically into Fatha. Tanween of Fatha is changed into one Alif Madda in Waqf. And this is called Maddul Ivar. And the duration is minimum two counts and maximum three, not more than that. In a very slow rhythmical mode of recitation, it will be three counts max, but two to three counts, not more than that. So After exploring all these points about merging and uh, two broad categories, tafkhim and tarqiq, and how many times the tafkhim takes place in this recitation. Now, I will recite the verse in a simple mode. <clears throat> أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم 
barrafa'ahu Allahu ilaihi wa kana Allahu azizan hakima remember the word ilaihi we can make a pause elongation two counts or maximum four counts in this case ilai or ilai depending subject to the mode of recitation if it is quite slow then four counts will be enough and two to three counts will be enough on azizan and hakima jazakumullah In this program, we are going to make grammatical analysis of verse number 159 of Surah An-Nisa, chapter 4. And this analysis will be made with some notable points. So the first point we should understand that there are three broad categories of speech, kalam. One is noun, that is called ism in the rules of translation or grammar. Verb, that is called fail in Arabic. And particle, harf or in other words, the prepositions. Those words which cannot be defined as a noun, ism, or a verb, fail, they are considered as huruf. Huruf is a plural of harf, which means particle, meaningful word, but they need either a verb or an ism. So there are three broad categories of kalam. Ism, fail, and harf. Point two is that, that the word bal is not a verb. It is not a noun. It is a particle. It is a harf. And it is called retraction particle. And the meaning of retraction is that like a disclaimer. And bal is that word which makes the previous, previously mentioned some statement from superior to junior or junior to superior, meaning in the essence. And it has also a function that in order to give more meaning and emphasize of a certain quality of a certain person, it is also used for that one. And it appears 122 times in the Quran. And basically, it is a connecting particle. And in Arabic, it is called harf idrab or harful idrab. And the basic meaning of idrab is to one is to separate, is to abandon, it to, is to go away taking a third. So basically, the meaning of bal. It is commonly translated as a bal, but, but the meaningful sentence will be in order to understand that, that this is not the matter, but the matter of fact is that, and then it continues. So in other words, bal is a connecting particle, and it, is, it acts like a disclaimer of the previous statement whatever it has been stated previously, it gives the clear meaning or in terms of affirmation or negation. 
So in this verse 159, it has been used as a disclaimer or negation or explaining or not believing in the previous statement that the fact which has been mentioned there. When we go to one verse number 158, this chapter four, verse uh, Surah An-Nisa, we find here that the statement is that, وَقَوْلِهِمْ إِنَّا قَتَلْنَا الْمَسِيحَ عِيسَ بْنَ مَرْيَمَ رَسُولَ اللَّهِ وَمَا قَتَلُوهُ وَمَا سَلَبُوهُ Basically, that, that was a statement or their belief or their propaganda of the Jews that we have killed Messiah, Isa, son of Mary, messenger of Allah. That was their statement. They wanted to crucify, they wanted to condemn him according to a punishment mentioned in Torah. But Allah Ta'ala says, and it is more emphasized, for example, Wama Kataluhu Yakhina or Wama Kataluhu Wama Salabuhu. And the verse number 59, Bar Rafa'ahullahu ilayhi. But Allah has exalted him towards him. So, Bal, in other words, is a disclaimer of the words that Inna Katalna al Masiya Isa ibn Maryam Rasulullah. And it is also affirmation that Wama Kataluhu Wama Salabuhu, but what is the Allah's kind treatment and handling that matter? And that is the word has been used, Bal. If we go through all examples, which I mentioned that 122 times it has been mentioned, then the meaning of bal will be clear that this is a connecting particle. In Arabic, it is called idrab, harf idrab. And uh, the right translation will be that keeping in mind the previously mentioned words, that this is not the matter which you understand or which is being propag uh, propaganda, made, made propaganda or propagated. But the matter of fact is that, and then after Bal Rafa'ullah. Another notable point is that, that in this verse, two verbs has been used. The first one is Rafa'ah. Rafa'ahullah ilayhi, the first one, Rafa'ah. And the second is Kana. Now, Rafa'a and the root letters are three, Ra, Fa, and Ain. Ra, Fa, Ain, and this verb is used in the Quran 29 times in six patterns. So multiple meanings we have for this, in this root letter, Ra, Fa, and Ain. And, uh, some is a physical meaning, some is a very analogy and, uh, and very uh, in essence, we can understand that meaning figuratively. So here the word rafa'a is a perfect and yarfa'u is an imperfect. And this rafa'a, this one as a meaning of you know, this verb has been used 22 times. So total 29 times from this root letters, six patterns, and the word here, rafa'a, yarfa'u, this uh, verb in a uh, verb pattern 22 times. And uh, exalt to raise all meanings, range of meanings in this rafa'a. And the fifth point is that kana. It is also considered a verb, but it is not a regular verb. It is, it is not a strong verb. As compared to rafa'a, rafa'a, kana is considered irregular verb, defective verb, hollow verb, because it needs a noun and predicate 
to complete the meaning. And we should note the ending of Allahu and Azizan and Hakima. Here the word Wakan Allahu here, remember Wakan Allahu Ha with a Dhamma. And predicate which is Azizan and Hakima is with Tanween followed by Alif. And in last class, we covered what is Nasb and Mansub and marfu. So as I mentioned that the kana demands or needs a noun. And uh, in other words, file, and that is Allah. Or in other words, the noun of kana is Allah. And the khabar, the predicate is azizan. And hakima is another piece of information is there. So remember, the noun after kana will be, last letter will be dhamma, and that is a, in a position being maf, a fa'il. And azizan is mansub, this predicate. Wherever you find in the Quran, the kana has been used abundantly in the Quran. Basically, the 1358 times this word kana, sometime kana, kuntu, kunta, kanu, kuntum, you know, different pat patterns they have been used. The verb here in this sense that this is a verb, it has been used so much time. Now, sixth point is that jumla fi'liya, which means verbal sentence. And if we reflect on rafa'ahullahu this is a jumla fi'liya because we can rafa'a this is a verb and then who upon you know this verb is making a function or affecting that one that him rafa'ahu he exalted him who did this one allahu and why this is a file in this uh, jumla fi'liya because Allah who carries a Dhamma at the end, and this is Marfu. Halatu Raf. So Rafa'ahullahu means Allah exalted him. And him is from who, which is an attached pronoun. And the seventh point that Jumla Ismiya, which means nominal sentence. And if we Reflect on wa kan Allahu Aziz and Hakima wa is a connecting particle because it continues the message from the previous bar of Allah wa connecting particle. And kana already told you irregular verb, hollow verb. And this is a nominal sentence. Though the word, the verb has been used, hollow verb kana. But basically, the meaning is that the, the actual words was that Allahu Azizun Hakim. Or if we remove Kana, just for the sake of understanding, it will be Wallahu Azizun Hakim. When we introduce Kana because of a certain message and philosophy behind that, Allah Ta'ala has mentioned Kana. Kana has made Azizun to Azizan, Hakimun to Hakima. So this is the role or function or character of Kana when it is used in a sentence. That is Ism will be Marfu, which is Allahu. Its predicate Khabar will be Mansub with a Fatha, which is here Azizan and Hakima is uh, another adjective or uh, sifat of uh, Aziz. Now, the eighth point is that in today's class, compound preposition. Remember, after bar raf ahullahu, ilayhi, this is a compound preposition in this case, that ila is a preposition towards. 
and he is a attached pronoun and ila and uh, basically it was who the first like lahu walahu but ila demands that attached pronoun should be with a kasra at the end so who has turned into he like we say lahum or bihim lahu or bihi so there are certain huruf which demand a kasra and these are called huruful jar and ila is one of them so ilahu when they are combined it is ilaihi ilai so these are the eight points we should consider inshallah ta'ala there are many other points are here but for the time being it will suffice and as our class our program advances more subtle points will be discussed and uh, that will be detailed out jazakumullah Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. As you know that we are writing the names of the chapters of the Quran and so far in the last three programs we um, have composed Surah Al-Fatiha, Surah Al-Baqarah, Surah Al-Surah Ali Imran. Now we have received some entries, some compositions and I'm going to make some corrections, some evaluation, some comments. So first of all, this is IQC, this ID, Itka Quranic Calligraphy 122. So one is the ID and 22 is the year. So 122 Surah. Now by the, by the blessings of Allah, this is uh, quite good. And this is a starting point. So first of all, you know this bismillah rahman rahim uh, is just you know in the starting this is alif and lam and rahman so that should be you know again it should be written with regards to the surah um, it is quite uh, initial stage this time so you can see this starting point starting from here like this like this and then from here this is you know one one dot like this and again that's fine but more it should be more crispy from here okay so let's see and this part is missing so in this case if this is more than that and then from here it will in the same width it will come here so that is needs to be more emphasis on that so with regards to this uh, wow it will be you know from here and half dot up like this one and making inside an eye you know like this and then coming down a little bit so here that should be more work is done here and uh, this raw is again the first bit is two and a half like this and then from here half it will go down like this one like this one this is also good but uh, inshallah ta'ala in next um, composition we will cover that one and uh, surprisingly from the same email we received this entry and this entry this is quite good it is understood that it is done by a very early um, writer of the Quran maybe some child but this is quite good so we go to this one so make uh, this mashallah this is quite good and again this width is quite small so it would be like this so this is this is okay but it should be 
one, one count or one dot. This is also good and uh, this width is okay. This one, I think six, six, five, so that's fine. So there should be four. So it is a bit good, quite good. This raw is also good, little bit more. But here is the problem. Here it will be, you know, like this and coming down. And gravity point will be here, in this case, in this. And from here, it will go up. And inside, you know, if this inside is easily one dot. So if this is the width, one dot is quite fixed inside, very tight, is uh, suffocated. And also, if we, this is good, but it little bit, little bit more, and the, this grip. So comparatively, it is quite good. This is also okay. Here, inside, I should be clear. So. This one small, maybe that's one. So that's fine. That's okay. This is fine. These two doors on top of that. So in this case, it will be here. That's fine. That's very nice. And on top of that, this is a spoon. And this would ideally should be here. This will be okay. So it is quite good to start with seen, wow, raw, and Thai marbuta, little Thai marbuta, as I mentioned, that there should be in this case. In uh, this, and this is a Taj or uh, Hilia Zulf and on top of that two dots and here you know so if you work on this one it will be inshallah more good the related entries it is quite good as well and uh, here again seen this scene and then from here to bigger and from this you can make like this this dhamma is with a half if this is five it should be two and half if this is six is three so let's see with the the smaller uh, smaller this this dhamma first go up and make a eye you know there sh the eye the eye should be there eye should be there this raw is good, but again, as compared to this part, there should be bigger, two and half. So, there should be two and half, as compared to this one. So, and also there is a problem here. This should be, you know, like this shape, triangle. So, that will be in this sense, this, like this like this here is a gap look this one and from here inside simple one dot and this part should be bigger than that you know this one this should be down if you do do this one there should be you know 
higher as compared to this one. And also not a full cut, not a full hair. This will be and the gravity point, the full, should be here, not top. This is the full. Here, comparatively low. And this is helia. And from here, making sure that this is the one, one dot inside, is go up. So, mashallah, it is also very nice to start with. With regards to this, this is called Mizan. Okay, remember, and most of the time, it is important that Mizan should come on top of that, not below. If I have done that in the beginning, that was incorrect. It should be on top of that. And in this case, this first down and this point is also higher higher will be that and that is mizan inshallah i will give more detail of this one this is very very important philosophical pattern in this regard this is quite good okay there are many other points but we have to cover many others this iqc6 that was uh, 522, this is 622. Again, this is very nice and I like the idea, different colors. Uh, starting point, this is good, seen, but inside, a bit suffocated here. This is comparatively good. And this, this, you know, scoon. Remember, sukoon is always with the same cut, with the same width as you have done all that. All others like kasra, dhamma, or fatha, that will be half of uh, your column width. So if in this case, it be like, like that, simple. And uh, this is good again as I mentioned with regards to this bit higher so that will the same you know they have the same size here is the mistake we should bit and this is more than that it should be this way and then it is go upward Remember, there is this shape inside. This shape inside becomes, when it is done rightly, it becomes like this. So, and then, like this triangle, and then like. Okay, that's quite good. And, uh, here needs more attention, more attention. And this wow, this I is not good. It should be like this. Remember this I in this way. And then it goes down. This bit different. It's not I. Inside shape is this. that eye and round the, is the flesh this is wow okay so al-baqara here taj is important it is okay and also similarly with the lam here as well otherwise al-fatha that's very nice ali imran it is good al-baqara again that's the issue here this bit half cut down and will long and this is slanted. Inshallah with the passage of time it will be okay. That's nice. And it, that is again from uh, 622. I think maybe that is the initial part. So 
again from here look this and this touch little bit up and down and from here you make a curve this this one so if you count that will be one and half one and half and similarly that will be one so if this is this one one that's okay but here little bit up and from here like this and then come down and from here it will go remember this this part which is missing here and from here you can put otherwise it is okay with this ta ta first of all this simple this curve bit three connection and then that will be five five and from here like this one okay and then you can make these two and one count inside it is it so seen wow ra tai marbuta this this with full inshallah ta'ala it will you will improve this one next we have 622 again i think this is uh, initially um it was it looks like that uh, double pencil or double pen technique is given so look if you if you don't have qalam you know the pen qalam uh, you have lead pencils make like this one and then start reading uh, writing this one this look scene and then you can fill in fill in afterwards you can fill in make it sharp make it fill in and it will be okay you know like uh, with any brush or something you can fill in even not that will be okay i like for example this one like this one and you can then sh make it sharp and uh, with regards to spoon you can make that you can make so this that's fine this is quite good 722 iqc 722 very nice mashallah again this spoon that spoon will be this one okay and uh, that's comparatively better but it should be more than that again there is a the point more than that because the width i think this is the same as i can say a little bit more or this the same comparatively it is quite good again this lam remember this is not good so you have to work with the alif again one and half like first of all make like this and from top you can make a hiliya this one okay 
so this one and half one and half so that's height that's height lam i think this is a good start and the color combination is quite good it's nice then we have iqc822 so we are focusing on this uh, sura this is kalima taiba it's quite good mashallah but this suratul fatiha suratul baqara al imran again sura from here look 70 this this one and that point will be higher this alif keep going keep practicing this one taj so there are several ways either you do this way and then little bit down but it is better that if you first write alif from and then you can make on top of that surat al fatiha again skirt this one ta first this arch this paper is not uh, so nice otherwise uh, okay no problem anyway it's good mashallah this all in this one ayn first this and on top that pointy and one dot away it will start from here anyway this was <clears throat> mashallah keep going this is again i think this is with a simple qalam but if you have this technique double pencil it could be double po ball points anyway so that will be so like uh, Like for example, this. Same as you can do that, and make a this taj with this one to practice, and then a little bit. Keep going, keep practicing, and inshallah it'll be okay. So, so afterwards, afterwards you can you can fill in whatever column is with you. You can you can fill in with this. it depends I'm doing quite fast but if you have time then you can do that 
So double pencil is also very very good. This my example look this one. Al Swal Alvariso. So you can make practice. Make practice and you, you can then fill in Alvaris. Al-Baqarah. So top three of this time or these. 722, 122, and this 622. So these are top high achievers in this exercise. May Allah bless you more. Keep going. And uh, inshallah, all will improve. Assalamu alaikum.